Thank you to SimThick, accessible via sim.gg, for the weapon stats used in making this video. Link in the description. In this video, I will cover the long range assault rifles. This includes the Ribby Rolls 1918 and the Breda 1935 PG. These rifles bridge the gap between assault rifles and the longer ranged semi auto rifles. They're good for when you want to play a more anti infantry defense or support role. The longer effective ranges will allow you to get more kill streaks for longer durations, but will keep you at ranges that make anti vehicle work a more secondary concern. That is why I suggest the light infantry combat role for both of these rifles. The benefit of having more hit point regeneration is particularly useful when you are positioning yourself in locations that are distant from health crates and medics that will likely stick closer to your team's main force. With this combat role selected, you will be able to take a hit, hide behind cover, and recover most if not all of your health points without having to run for a health pack or using up one you might already have on hand. Another reason is that both weapons tend to chew through their ammo pools due to the typically lower damage at range for the ribby rolls and the typically smaller pool of ammo than average with the Breda. The ability to gain extra ammo from downed soldiers is fairly beneficial as a result. When it comes to gadgets, what I suggest you pick depends more on which rifle you pick between the two. Whether vehicles are present or not on the map ends up mattering very little in this case. For the ribby rolls, you want to pick the frag grenade, bazooka, and sticky dynamite. The frag grenade can help in closer quarter situations where the ribby rolls will be somewhat less effective. The bazooka will let you keep your distance from the center of the fight, where vehicles likely roam. Hitting the tank repeatedly will either soften them for a closer range assault class player or force the tank to retreat. The sticky dynamite is more of a utility. You can use it if a tank passes close by and destroy most types of tank by emptying all of your dynamite onto them and detonating. Or if you try to take a capture point as a loner, the dynamite can also be useful as an anti-infantry trap or wall busting tool allowing you to create a convenient hole to snipe from. For the Breda, my suggestions are the same as the ones I made for the M1907 SF. Incendiary Grenade, Piat, and Flamethrower. The reasons are again fairly similar. The Breda has the worst ammo reliability of all assault rifles, made significantly worse by its burst fire nature. Burst fire makes careful fire control harder, if not impossible, and while it is effective at somewhat longer ranges than the typical assault rifle, it doesn't achieve the same kind of long range efficiency of the river rolls. With the Breda, you are more in danger of being killed mid-reload than any other assault rifle, which is where all three of these gadgets can come in handy for. The Piat is best for clear and immediate threats that you have visual confirmation of when you run out of the Breda's ammunition. The flamethrower and incendiary, however, can be good follow-up weapons for creating a quick defensive wall of fire to allow you to reload when you suspect there are threats around the corner, or you have an empty Breda and Pia. The sidearm to choose for the ribby rolls is the Mark VI revolver. The ribby rolls can perform in a pinch in close range because of its truly automatic fire, but the Mark VI works well as a dedicated CQC alternative primary. And really, because of the typical ranges you will be using the ribby rolls at, assuming you are keeping your distance properly, the rare times you get jumped at closer ranges, the ribby rolls should cover for you decently well, and its ammo reliability is already fairly good, making the use of a faster swap feature a more inconsistent requirement from a pistol, like the workhorse assault rifles, but even less of a danger because of the preferred ribby rolls engagement distances being much longer. As for the Breda's best sidearm, this was a hard choice. Ultimately, I chose the P38. The Breda has terrible ammo reliability and deals much more damage per shot compared to the rest of the assault rifles. This means you want a pistol that is synergistic with higher damage and longer range while still featuring a faster swap time than average. The P38 is your go-to for anti-infantry work on a empty Breda when the Piat won't make the range cut. The next best thing would have been the Ruby, which has similarly good ammo reliability and a top-of-the-line swap time, 
but it has significantly worse performance at longer ranges. If we were talking about a middle-of-the-road SMG with this kind of ammo reliability, the Ruby would have won easy. But the Breda is a long-range assault rifle. If anything, you could argue for the P08 for its significantly superior bullet velocity if it weren't for its even slower swap time and awkward toggle lock recoil making follow-up shots difficult. Both assault rifles being effective at longer ranges, I strongly suggest the three times scope. The slower aim down sights time is worth the extra zoom and precision considering the ranges you are best off using these guns at. The upgrade tree for both, I suggest, is right right, right. Though this results in fairly different upgrades for each, both get quick aim and barrel bedding, which for long range and slower aim down sights times of 3x scopes, both is essential. A important note for the ribby rolls is that this comes with a custom stock upgrade, which means you should be able to strafe and fire with less penalty. Take advantage of the reduced penalty, but be aware a skilled sniper should be able to headshot you with little trouble without the light stock upgrade to accompany it. The notable upgrade for the Breda is the trigger job upgrade, as opposed to the light bolt. This reduces the time between bursts instead of increasing the rate of fire of the burst itself, making the weapon essentially feel like a rambunctious, fully automatic assault rifle. Why do I suggest this upgrade? Well, my philosophy for burst weapons is that they aren't worthwhile unless you can regularly get a one-shot burst kill with it, especially with a burst delay. And make no mistake, it's possible to get a one burst kill with the Breda in ranges within 30 meters. Such a shot achieves a faster time to kill than even the M1907SF with it, if you choose the light bolt upgrade instead which the M1907 otherwise has the fastest overall time to kill. But this is absolutely, positively not worth it, outside of the most vanity-stricken player, or savant. If you have to ask if you are a savant, then guess what? You aren't one. If you miss one shot out of four of that burst, you are likely dooming yourself for a very slow time to kill. And that will happen more often than it won't. With the recoil the Breda is sporting, this is just a statistical probability. So what good is the Breda then? Well, with the right side of the tree, the weapon still is essentially a true fast killer beyond 30 meters. It comes in second place to the M1907 with the trigger job upgrade. And it's time to kill matches the Ribby rolls very closely within 30 meters with that upgrade. If you've managed in close quarters with the Ribby rolls, then you can manage with the Breda with the trigger job. This will allow more consistent performances for ranges it's actually meant for, beyond 30 meters. As for more general tactics for these longer range assault rifles, you should almost play like a supporting role, the Ribby rolls being like a fully automatic DMR and infiltrator, and the Breda being a sort of rear guard to the front line of your team. While the Ribby rolls has a bipod, don't be afraid to be a bit more mobile with it. Use the bipod only for extreme ranges, and only when a target is in the open and unaware of you. For the Breda, just make sure you stick to teammates to help with its poor ammo reliability, and generally stick to ranges beyond 30 meters, and you'll be right in the weapon's niche. You really should never mag dump or pre-fire either of these weapons. While the Ribby Rolls has a fairly good ammo reliability, you'll be hitting targets at its min damage more often. Though this can be mitigated with headshots, it's not quite as robust in this way as the workhorses. Wait until you have line of sight. For the Breda, it's not even a question. Every burst is precious. Covet it like your life depends on it, because it does. Count the bursts. There's five of them in a magazine before you get the slower reload. Consider reloading at four bursts. I've already mentioned it a few times, but the time to kill of these rifles is complicated. With the Ribby Rolls, the time to kill with body shots is the slowest among assault rifles. However, its very low recoil and ability to be bipodded makes it effective for consistent headshots that can down the target in half the time, and at longer ranges fairly consistently. The Breda, with the upgrade path I advise here, has the second best time to kill beyond 30 meters compared to the M1907, but has significantly improved recoil 
and damage per bullet that makes long-range kills a more reasonable proposition. Though headshots are significantly less useful with the Breda, I suggest aiming center of mass with the Breda most of the time. And that covers the last of the assault rifles. If you enjoyed my video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.